In this video, we're going to discuss blood flow in the heart and blood pressure. The heart is an important organ responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. For the exam, you need to be able to follow the path of blood through the heart. In this diagram, you can see the structure of the heart and all of the important compartments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the different compartments of blood. So first of all, blood enters the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. These blood vessels carry deoxygenated blood from the systemic circulation to the heart. This deoxygenated blood enters the heart in the right atrium. From the right atrium, the blood is pumped into the right ventricles, passing by what is called the right atrial ventricular valve or the tricuspid valve. The heart has a number of valves to prevent backflow of blood. So when the ventricles contract, the right AV valve or the tricuspid valve prevents the blood from moving back from the right ventricles into the right atrium. So with that valve, the blood continues to move from the right ventricles into the pulmonary artery and along the way it will pass through the pulmonary valve which again has an important role preventing the blood from moving back from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle. From the pulmonary artery, the deoxygenated blood will arrive at the lungs where gas exchange will occur, which will oxygenate the blood. This oxygenated blood passes through the pulmonary veins back to the heart into the left atrium. From here, the oxygenated blood will travel from the left atrium to the left ventricles, passing through the left atrial ventricular valve, which is also called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. Again, this prevents backflow of blood from the left ventricle into the left atrium. This oxygenated blood then travels from the left ventricle into the aorta where it'll go to the rest of the body. And again, there is another valve, the aortic valve that prevents backflow of blood from the aorta into the left ventricle. Okay, so this is the path of blood flow through the heart. Make sure you're able to walk through this for the exam. Let's now discuss blood pressure. So when the heart contracts, it increases the pressure of blood in the blood vessels. But at the same time, when it relaxes, that means the blood pressure drops. These two pressures are called the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. And you can see how they work in this diagram. The systolic pressure is the highest pressure in one heartbeat and is essentially the highest pressure when the ventricles contract. The diastolic pressure is the lowest pressure in two heartbeats and is essentially the pressure when the ventricles are relaxing, when they are filling with blood. In normal humans that are healthy, uh, expected systolic pressure over diastolic pressure is about 120 over 80. Now, there are a number of situations where blood pressure uh, is not 120 over 80, and in some cases they have clinical significance where someone is suffering from a particular disease causing the blood pressure to be too high or too low. But at the same time, there are some regular daily situations where the blood pressure may change and it's considered perfectly healthy. So you should know that blood pressure can be affected by three different factors. The first is changes in blood volume. You can think of the blood vessels as a container for the blood. If you drink more fluid, you increase blood volume. And if you have more volume of blood in essentially the same size container of the blood vessels, then that's going to increase blood pressure. So you can think of it as when you drink more fluids, your blood pressure goes up. When you drink less fluid and are dehydrated, your blood pressure goes down. Another important factor, it's peripheral resistance. Instead of changing the volume of blood, now you're essentially changing the size of the container, the blood vessels. So if you constrict the blood vessels, that decreases the vessel diameter. When you decrease the vessel diameter, this increases the peripheral resistance and the blood pressure. If you were to dilate the blood vessels, which is to increase the vessel diameter, this has the opposite effect of decreasing peripheral resistance and blood pressure. Finally, another factor that can affect blood pressure is cardiac output. 
Cardiac output is defined as the volume of blood pumped from the heart per minute. It is equal to the product of the heart rate, which is the beats per minute of the heart, and the stroke volume, which is the volume of blood pumped per heartbeat. If you increase the cardiac output, either through increasing heart rate or the stroke volume, that will also increase the blood pressure. And this is a situation which happens pretty regularly when you exercise. So normally when you're walking around, your heart rate and your stroke volume are fairly low. But if you start running, that's going to increase both your heart rate and stroke volume to be able to deliver more oxygenated blood to your body. So as a result, you also see an increase in the blood pressure during exercise.